Hi, this is Pat Fiorello, and I'm in my studio here in Atlanta. Today I am preparing for a Zoom workshop that I'm going to be teaching later this month. Uh, with all the shutdowns of school, a lot of the teaching has moved to online, and my students have been asking me to do so, so um, I am going to um, offer that. Um, so as I'm getting prepared for that class, which will be a paint-along type session, I wanted to create a still life that we'll be using during that session so that people can have photographs ahead of time to work with. And um, what I'm going to do is uh, an Italian inspired still life. So I want to share with you how I go about thinking about creating a still life setup, the thought process, the materials I use, and hopefully that'll be helpful for you as you think about setting up your own um, still life. So I've got these beautiful sunflowers here. I got today at Trader Joe's. Uh, some are larger with um, a, a lighter center. Some are uh, more traditional, smaller with the darker center. So I've got options to use. I don't know that I'll use all of these, but I've got them available. I have this urn, which kind of inspired the whole Tuscan inspired theme. And uh, it's, it's pretty rustic, you know, heavy. And uh, the sunflowers are not a real delicate flower. They're a little bit more substantive. And I thought they would go well with this type of pottery. So that began some of the thinking of the pairing of those combinations. Uh, what I start with here is I've got a, a box for my still life setup. It's on a stand. And it's just simply, um, you know, a wood crate. My husband made this for me. And uh, if you don't have something like this, you can simply get a carton and cut out three sides and make one for yourself. But this allows me to block out light uh, coming from either this side, that side if I want. If I want to have a higher um, a still life, I can turn it that way. So it's kind of useful to have and block out what's in the, the background and other, any other distracting light. Uh, I have... Uh, when I when I had my bathroom remodeled, I had this beautiful piece of uh, marble left over. Believe me, I'd been eyeing it up during the whole time, and I um, used that kind of as a base. I sometimes I'll cover it up, but it's always a nice kind of light base for me uh, to set everything on. And then I just start moving things around. And the process with the still life is just really an iterative process. It's part of the creative process because you are designing um, the flow, the eye movement, the colors, the relationships of everything in your painting based on what you're doing with the still life, still life setup. So it's different than going out and painting plein air and kind of capturing the essence of the scene and what's there. Here you're actually creating what's there from nothing. So it gives you a lot of latitude to um, have artistic license and do it just the way that you want. So I'm setting up the urn at first. That's kind of a major piece. It's a the largest piece in the setup. And I'm not gonna put it right in the middle. I think I'll put it here so that, you know, your eye will gradually move over there. And then I just start playing and taking different elements, putting them together, see if I like them. Uh, if I like the movement of the eye through them, um, or if they don't really work, then we toss that out and try something else. So it's very much an iterative trial and error process till you get something where you say, yeah, that's it. So I think I'll start out with one of the larger um, sunflowers because that kind of can be my focal point. It's you know, big, it's got a nice shape. I like this uh, petal that overlaps there that breaks up the center. And then I just keep playing with the, the shapes. This uh, sunflower already has a curve to it, which, you know, kind of can make a nice uh, movement here. So if a, a flower already has a curve, I kind of lean into the way that that flower is already uh, going. So we'll have those two together. And, um, you know, then maybe pick a third, um, you know, a little different orientation, a little different shape, um, and you see more of the side of it. So I'm trying to think variety. One of the keys of painting is unity with variety. I like to have 
things that are similar, but they're different. Repetition with variety, and I can get that here just by changing the angles of these flowers. And uh, maybe we'll come in with some of the, the smaller flowers, and I can put this here. Um, I want to use this one again, the repetition with variety. It's a sunflower, it repeats the color, but it's a little bit different because it has a different center, it's a different size. So that's giving me a little change. And then, you know, maybe I put the lemon here. I should mention I have my overhead lights on right now while I'm doing this, but soon I'll be turning those off and just get putting a single light source because that's the way I'm going to paint it. So I want to see how the light works with this arrangement. But for now, while I'm planning, you know, I'll, I'll just get started this way. So, you know, that's not bad, except I kind of don't like that these are a similar size. I mean, even though this is a different object, the lemon versus the flower, they still seem like a very similar size. So, you know, I, that doesn't read well for me. So I'm going to change that. What if I, you know, move the lemon here and maybe took another sunflower and grouped these together so that they're a little bit bigger size, like they become a mass of the two sunflowers together, so it's different from here. But I still have this nice triangle of yellows to move my eye around the, the painting. And uh, so let me see how I like that. I need something for the background, so what will I use? Um, I've got several cloths, and I tend to, when I'm doing a setup, I will try a dark background, a light background, a medium background to see which one uh, reads the best, which one has me most excited, really. If I'm not excited about doing the painting, um, you know, why do it? So I have to see something here and gets my energy going and gets me excited. So I'll start with the maybe this lighter you know, cloth. And I'm gonna change the lighting now because now we're getting into wanting to see how the light is flowing. So I'm turning on a single light source and I'm gonna turn off the overhead lights uh, which compete with that. And I'll get this light to a place where you know, I like it on this main flower, and this is kind of my star here, so I want the, the light to really be right on it. I've got this area lit up the most, and so, you know, that's not bad. I've got an arch kind of between here, like a circular design going around, so that's, that's a possibility. Uh, I'm not sure that I want to keep this white. As much as I love this, um, I think it competes with this. So those are the things, the relationships that I'm looking for. So I'm going to take all this off and now say, what can I do on the base? And maybe I add something else. This is a, a pillowcase, but on the back there's linen and it's Kind of get a neutral color so the more i have these things neutral the more the vivid color of the flowers is gonna pop out by contrast and that's what i'm looking for how do i get this to be the most kind of exciting portion of the painting and i'll bring back my other elements by the way once i get this set up the way that i want it um, I will fill these little tubes that you sometimes get from flowers at the florist and fill that with water and put these in here so that these flowers on the table will last a little bit longer. Um, so I'll do that once I like my placement. I've got this here. Can I add a little bit something more? You know, do I want something to come up here? Um, I have some other props in the studio. I don't know if you can see behind uh, this setup, there's a whole shelf, several shelves of different types of props, um, pottery, some uh, props that are reflective, like metals. Um, and then I have what I call my stand-in flowers. They're kind of like body doubles in a movie. Um, if I don't have my real flowers, um, 
I will um, use those as stand-ins while I'm waiting to get the real flowers. I prefer, obviously, painting from the real thing. Sometimes of the year you can't get them or uh, you just haven't gotten them yet. So I will use those other flowers to stand in or while I'm, um, you know, setting up, I might use those to give me an idea of do I like these colors going together, but they're my, my backups. But uh, for today, we're using the real flowers. And then we could, you know, throw some of these um, petals on here to add a little bit more color on the tabletop. And I'm thinking about, you know, adding maybe a little bit something greenery or whatever back here, maybe to have a little kind of dark element to stop me at the end of that painting. So I'm always thinking of this as the painting itself. Um, I could think a little bit about adding something up here. Uh, it would have to be less bulky than this, I think, but um, I'm not sure that, you know, that really, I'm not really sure that I like it. So again, I'm relating to my reaction. If I'm not excited about it, it doesn't go in. Um, these are other silk flowers that I have. Sometimes, again, to ha just have options for ideas. Um, again, I don't know if I need that much yellow. That might be too much yellow. Um, the other thing I might think about is, you know, this background. Do I want it to be light? It would work this way, but let's consider other options. So I might come back and, well, I have a, a large board that's very dark. I obviously wouldn't go this black in the painting, but it gives me an idea of the dark, which would give a much more, you know, dramatic type look to things. And that's a possibility. Or I could go somewhere in between the lighter and the dark and go with something that would be kind of a middle value. And I'll just throw this cloth right over. And that might be a nice neutral background. It's a little bit darker, so it will contrast with these flowers that are being lit. Um, you know, so that's a possibility. So as I'm going through this process in my studio, I usually be taking photos. I'm not doing it now because like the photos, uh, the cameras are being used um, on my phone, so I don't have the camera, but I would be taking photos along the way to see do I like it or not. Um, it helps me to see them in the frame of the camera because all the extra stuff is out and I'm cropping it just as um, the structure of my painting would be. So I will often set up flowers and try different options, take photos of different options, take photos with different backgrounds. Sometimes if it's a sunny day, I'll even take the whole arrangement outside in the backyard and set it up under the sunlight to see how I like it under the sunlight. So um, there's many, many possibilities that could come out of one arrangement. So um, anyway, so this is kind of as far as I've got now. I pretty much like this arrangement. Um, I'd be looking at it a little bit lower down from uh, just head on. And um, from this view, uh, I'm liking it uh, this way. So. Um, I'll probably work on this a little more. I might sleep on it and, and come back and, and look at it tomorrow, but um, that is the process that I go through. It's really starting with an idea. You know, I had the idea of I want to have a Tuscan-inspired uh, still life, and then what props would fit that mood, and then, you know, gathering up those props, and then just starting to play. Move things, take away, add. Um, and just seeing my reaction to that, am I excited to paint it? And does it have a good composition? Is my eye moving through it? Um, and, um, and that's it. So I hope this little you know, behind the scenes peek has helped you to uh, see how I would think about arranging a still life. Um, and I uh, hope that helps you um, with your still life arrangements as well. Uh, keep posted on my Facebook page for upcoming news on the Zoom workshops. And I hope that I'll see you uh, in a workshop sometime soon. Thanks so much, have a great day, bye. 
Thanks so much for watching and let's stay connected on social media so you can receive updates on new art and new instruction. Thanks so much. Bye.